Today we are going to be going ahead and creating the grappling hook inside of Unreal Engine 5. As a reference point so that you can get caught up before you start. First, we are going to be using the first person template for the duration of this lecture. Second, this is going to be a C++ tutorial, which means we're going to need to code. And third, in order to use the cable that we're going to be using to act as our grappling hook, you will have to include that plugin within your files. I understand this might not be something you know how to do, and I do have a companion video that will walk you through this step so that you can follow along. I will leave a link to this video to get you caught up in the description. Assuming you have done all that, we are now ready to begin. We're going to go into our C++ classes straight away, and all of our work today is going to be done within our character, so you can open up your character C++ class. Now, we're going to be continuing off of what we've done in previous lectures, but I will make sure to cover everything that you might need to add so that you have a chance to add it if you are just joining us now. We're going to start, as always, inside of our header file. Make sure you have an interact action set up that you are ready to use. This interact action is going to be the button that we press when we want to interact with something, or in this case, summon a grappling hook. So now we're ready to go ahead and create our grappling cable component. To do this, I'm going to make my life as easy as possible, and I'm going to copy the most recent U property that I have here, and I'm going to paste it just so that we don't have to retype everything. We can change our category to be something like grappling, and then we're going to go ahead and change what we are actually creating. In this case, we are going to be using the U cable component. So we're going to forward declare this so that we don't have to include the header file, and then we're going to call our U cable component. And then of course, since this is no longer the interact action, I'm going to call this variable my grapple cable, just for readability. So now we have created this U cable component that we're going to be able to play with as we go through and create our grappling hook. Now every grappling hook is going to need some helper variables. So let's scroll down to our private section down at the bottom here. First, we're going to create a private float variable that I'm going to call our max line distance. I'm going to set this to be 1600 because that's a number that I like to use. This is going to be responsible for the maximum distance we're going to be able to scout for when we are doing our line trace to see what we can connect our grappling hook to. Next, we're going to need a Boolean, or a true or false, that is going to check and ask the very important question to say, are we currently grappling? And I'm going to call this is grappling, and I'm going to set this to false because as a default, we're not really going to be grappling unless we are saying we are. And then finally, I'm going to create an F vector, or a point in space, that I'm going to call our grab point. When we grab something with our line trace, we are going to have an impact point. And we're going to want to keep track of that impact point so that we can continue to travel towards it as long as we are continuing to hold our button down. That should be everything that we need to set up inside of our header file. Let's switch over to our C++ file now, and let's add in our new best friend, our cable component. So we are going to include our cable component.h. Again, if you are getting an error saying that they cannot find this file, that is because you have not included it inside of your actual project file directory. I have a video in the description that will help you resolve this error. So now we're going to go inside of our constructor and we're going to construct the default values that we have for our lovely cable. So this is our constructor here and we're going to go to the bottom just to keep things separated. And we are going to operate within our grappling cable now. So let's grab our grapple cable. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create it. So our grapple cable is going to be equal to a create default sub object that is of type U cable component. And we are going to call this inside of Blueprint our grappling line. Very standard object creation there. Next, we're going to grab our grapple cable, and we're going to call a method off of that called setup attachment, so that we can say that this is going to be the child of our first person camera component. The reason for this is in first person, our camera is the eyes, and we want our grapple to go wherever the eyes go. And then finally, since this is not always going to be visible or it's going to look like we are doing something rather inappropriate, we are going to be setting our visibility on this object to be false so that it doesn't appear until we're actually attached to something. Now it has just occurred to me that I did not properly zoom in, so I'm going to catch that early and I'm going to zoom in right now. And now that everything is rather large, I'll give you a chance to catch up in case you were having trouble seeing before. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look for when we're interacting. So let's scroll down to where we are setting up our player input component. From the last time we were working together, we took our interact action and we talked about what was going to happen in a different scenario when this was triggered. For the purposes of our grappling hook, we're going to need something to happen when we trigger the event, which is already set up nicely for us and is going to call our interact method. But we're also going to need something to happen when we are done interacting. So to set that up, I'm just going to copy this previous line and then I'm going to call the eTrigger event for completed. So this is saying that when we are done pressing our interact action, we want to call a different method. Now I haven't set up this method yet, so let's quickly bounce into our cable testing header file. 
scroll all the way down to our private section here and create a new void method that we are going to call stop interact. And then taking the shortcut as always, I'm going to create the definition inside of our C++ file, and it ever so nicely ends up underneath our other interact method, which is fantastic. And then if we scroll back up to the top where we are setting up our player input component, I'm now going to change the second interact for our completed to go to the stop interact method that we have just built. So now when we trigger the event, we're going to go to the interact method. And when we are done, we are going to go over to the stop interact method. So now it's time to get our hands dirty and create our interacting method. In our last video, when we talked about object interaction, we set up a line trace to get a hit result that we then reference to see if we should activate a switch. This line here is where we are doing our line trace. Our line trace does a lot of things for us. The first thing it does is it gives us a hit result. A hit result is a lot of data that we are going to use to do certain things. This can be like what was hit, where was it hit, and what is happening to it. Further to that, we need to know where we are going to be sweeping. Our start variable is the starting location for our line trace. And up here where we declare it, we are getting our capsule component or what is responsible for our collision inside of this first person character. And we are getting that location as our starting point. Our ending point is how far away we are going to be going and looking. And here you can see previously, we set this to be equal to our start plus some arbitrary number times our actor forward vector. This was all well and good when we were looking in pretty much one direction and only really caring about what's in front of us. But now that we're going to be looking in 3D space, this is going to need to change and we no longer want to have a magic number here. Now getting rid of our magic number, we are going to multiply this by our max line distance. And we are going to take this max line distance and we're going to multiply this by this forward vector. But instead of it being our actor's forward vector, we need this to be specifically the cameras. So what we're going to do here is we are going to get a reference to our first person camera that we created. And luckily we have a way to do that because we created that inside of this class. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call a method off of that called get component rotation. So now we have a general idea about which way we are looking. But in order to get the actual direction that we're looking, we need to take this a step further and use the UKismet math library. This library in particular gives us a lot of lovely math formulas, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go all the way to the top with all of our other includes, and we are going to drop in the include for the kismet slash kismet math library dot h. So now with the power of math at our side, we can go all the way back down to the interact here and continue with our work. So we have our camera components rotation and we want to get the vector representation of that or, or in other words, we wanna get the forward vector of this rotation off of this component. To do that, we are going to call our u kismet math library and we're gonna call a function off of that that is called get forward vector. And then we are able to wrap what we had just finished here. And I'm gonna put this on a new line for readability inside of more brackets. And then once we line out our parentheses, we have a completed end statement here. So to recap, our line trace is going from our location of the capsule component, and then it's going to end up a certain distance away in whatever direction our camera is looking. Then from there, this f quat is just a math thing that we apparently need to put here and I don't entirely understand. And then this is the channel that we're going to be tracing. This in particular references a custom trace channel that we created in the previous video when we were talking about general object interactivity. If you want to learn where to find all of your trace channel variables, I would recommend giving that video a watch. And this last piece here is the size and object of our line trace. In this case, our trace is going to be the shape of a sphere and it's going to be about a meter or a hundred centimeters long. So this gives us a little bit of a wide net to make sure that we aren't being too precise for our players. And then you can see here that this hit result is declared right beforehand, but we aren't putting any data here. It's important to note that when you do a line trace, you are going to be filling in a previously declared variable. So despite the fact that this is not equal to this result, this is going to populate this variable. So if we return true and we have hit something, then we're going to need to do something entirely different to what we did last day. So I'm going to clear out the body of this if statement and we're gonna think about something new. The big question here is what happens when we are grappling something? Because if we've hit something, we are going to be grappling and wanting to head towards them. So first, we're gonna take that Boolean variable that we created and we're going to set it to true to signify that we are indeed truly grappling now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to no longer want to be classified as on the ground and walkable. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get our character's movement component. 
And then once we have our movement component, we're going to call a method off of that called set movement mode. And what you'll notice here is we are getting a red squiggly line because we do not have this inside of our header file. So before we go any further, because I love IntelliSense more than anything, I'm going to scroll all the way back to the top and inside of our ever growing list of includes, I am going to include another different library here. And this is for our character movement component. Now going all the way back down to where we were working previously, we have our get character movement component here. That is no longer giving us a red error and we can now set our movement mode and use IntelliSense as our guide. Looking at what comes up through the IntelliSense, we can see that this needs to have something called an E movement mode. Basically, this is a preset amount of things that Unreal recognizes through their own coding. To do this, we are going to call exactly what they want us to, and that is going to be our E movement mode. And we're going to call off of the E movement mode one of the things that they recognize, and that is what pops up on this list here. So we can see we have stuff like falling, flying, nav walking, swimming, etc. And in this case, since we are not falling in space, we are going to be considered flying. So when we grapple something, we are going to make sure that the world knows we are grappling and we'll set up what becomes of that in a bit. And then we're going to take our character movement and we're going to make sure that we are flying to avoid the certain complications that happen if you're walking. The next thing we need to do is we need to take our grappling cable which is currently invisible, and make sure that we now can set that to be true so that we can see our actual grapple cable so it's not just us hanging out in space flying towards an object. It'll look like there's an actual cable there. And then finally, we're gonna take that imaginary point that we created before, that grab point, and we're going to set that to be equal to our hit result, and we're going to go off of our hit result and get the impact point. So our grab point is going to be equal to wherever the impact of our line trace took place. Of course, you'll notice that this is not defined. If you go to the header file, you can see that I actually didn't know how to spell earlier. And if I go and change this P to a B, well, now everything makes sense and English is restored. Now we're gonna skip down below here since it's so convenient to do so. And we're gonna set up what happens when we are done interacting. And basically we are going to do the reverse of what we are doing here. So first we're going to find that is grappling variable and we're gonna set it to false. And now we're gonna change our movement mode again. Basically the long story short is to avoid a lot of complications of potential bad, we need to make sure that our character is falling when by the time they leave this method. But we don't wanna overwrite that if they are already falling. That can cause some uh, complications such as floating character disease. So what we're gonna do to qualify this is we're gonna make an if statement where we're gonna check to see if our character is falling. So we're going to go and get our character movement component. And then we're going to call something called is falling. This is a beautiful built-in method that does exactly what we want it to. It's going to check to see if our character is currently in the falling movement mode. And basically what we are saying with this exclamation point is if we are not already falling, then you can do whatever is in these brackets. So if our character is not falling, then we sure as hell want to start. So we're going to call get character movement component again. And then we're going to call that set movement mode that we discussed previously where we call our E movement mode. And then this time we want to make sure that we are setting ourselves to be falling. Then once we are sure that we are falling, we can go ahead and hide our little grapple cable from the world by setting our visibility on this component to be false once again. So now that we properly have a way that we are turning on and turning off our grappling hook, we are good to go ahead and talk about the actual grapple. While we are attached to something, we are gonna to want to move towards that grapple location every frame. In order to do something every frame, we need to have our tick method. Inside of our character's header file, we are going to look to see if this already exists. Now, usually I would control F this, but our character is not the most complicated and we can see that that is not in existence yet. So inside of this protected section here, we are going to call our void tick and this comes with the added benefit of a float variable called delta time. Don't worry too much about the delta time. We're gonna be using it to make sure that things are frame rate independent, but this is exactly the signature we need so that Unreal recognizes that we wanna do something every frame. And now we're gonna create the definition inside of our C++ file and off to work we go. Now with both begin play and tick, these are both functions that are very commonly used and as such, we wanna make sure that the parent classes always get their due diligence. So to start with both begin play and tick, we need to make sure that we call the parent or the super version of this method to make sure that any kind of setup that needs to get done gets done. 
Next, we are going to check to see if we are grappling. This is where we are finally using that variable that we've been messing with this entire time. So what is gonna happen if we are currently grappling something? Well, we're gonna to need to move towards wherever we are grappling. So we're going to take our grapple cable and we are going to look at our end location so that we can set up where we want to fly to. And we're gonna set this to be equal to our get actor transform because this is the easiest way to get location data for our actor. And we are going to call something called the inverse transform position on our grab point. The reason we call this inverse transform position is because uh, of math. I don't remember the specific reason for the math, but rest assured if you don't do this, your grapple is gonna go all over the place and it's not gonna be very smooth. And then the last thing we want to do is we wanna get our character movement component one more time. And then we're going to add a force onto our character movement component now, the force itself is just going to be a big number, something like 10,000. But now we need to aim this. To aim this, we are going to take that location in space that we're heading towards, and we're going to take our current location of where we are, and then we're going to get a direction off of that. The way we're going to do that is we're going to get our grab point, and then we're going to subtract from it our current location, which can be done by calling get actor location. Once that is done, we are going to be able to take a method off of this. So I'm going to stick these in parentheses so that this happens first. And then taking the combination of these two vectors, we're going to call a method off of this called get safe normal. Get safe normal takes a vector and takes and basically fundamentally changes it so that it's just a direction. And now that we have our direction, we are good to change that by multiplying by big number. And in this case, I don't know, let's stick another zero on there just for fun, make sure we're really ripping around. And now with all of that done, we are good to save both of these files and then compile. After a successful compile, we are good to go into our blueprints folder and open up the blueprint for our first person character. Inside of this, you will now notice that we have a grapple cable component that represents the grapple cable that we are going to be using for our grappling hook. And you will notice if we go to the viewport that is currently not visible. That is fine, that is by design, that is how we set it up. The only important thing that I really want to make sure we have here is that you can set your material if you want your component to look a certain way when you are grappling around and just to make sure that you have everything set up properly inside of everything if we look for our input i want you to make sure that your interact action is properly filled in with an actual button that will be pressed so now staring at this magical circle that i know is set to the proper trace channel when i press this you will see that for a split second we see our rope and then it disappears what gives let's go back into our blueprint and look at the viewport if i click on my grapple cable look at where this is it is inside of our camera. That's not very good for seeing. So to make sure that we can actually see our grapple cable, I'm gonna pull that forward and a little bit down so that it looks kind of at about where my chest should be. Compiling and saving those changes and then hitting play. Let's take a big stare right at our circle here and press, and then now we can actually see it. And you can see how messing with the location of the start of our grapple hook is going to dictate how much or how little we can see. And I'll leave that up to you to better tune than what I'm gonna do here. So now just for fun, let's take this magic circle, raise it skyward here, and then hit play. If I look skyward, aim at my giant circle in the sky and press, we are grappling towards it and everything works like a grappling hook should, or at least a rudimentary grappling hook. And that is how you can create a grappling hook in Unreal Engine 5. If you found this useful, please subscribe to the channel, for I am making tutorials like this pretty consistently. Otherwise, happy coding, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.